Thank you so much, Mr. Sanusi, for speaking with us on the, on the news. First of all, Thanks. we know that um, in the last couple of months, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding some of the statements you've made as regards the economy and the rest of it. And at the, towards the end of last year, President Atia asked for your resignation. But we didn't see that coming, only for this to happen. So were you surprised when you heard that you had actually been suspended? I know I wasn't. Um, I suppose maybe um, having just left this country this morning and gone to Niger, and I went for a meeting with the president of Niger along with African, uh, West African Central Bank governors. Uh, the uh, request of West African heads of state who set up this panel, uh, President of Niger and President of Ghana, uh, to review the uh, progress um, on the West African currency zone. I, I came out of the meeting and my staff said, oh, there have been developments at home. Um, and I said, well, what? And they said, uh, uh, Ruben Abati has announced that you've been suspended by the president. And I said, well, oh, what took them so long? Um, y you know, it was always coming. Um, I, I had told many friends along. I wanted to leave this office in October last year. So what stopped you? I had conversations with my elders, um, particularly um, His Highness the Emir. Uh, who felt it would not be proper for me to leave before the end of my term and um, advised that I should stay since I had a five-year term. And I stayed basically because of that. But I knew and I, and I did tell all of them that given what I was seeing uh, and given the direction I thought w I was headed uh, with the government, I did not think it was going to end well. So I knew. Um, at the last bankers' committee, there was obviously a discussion of this letter and the $20 billion and why the central bank um, had to take the position it took. And I remember the MDs asked me, what do you think is going to happen now that you've put all of this on the table? And I said, nothing. I don't think anyone is going to pay a price for it. I think I will pay the price for it. I mean, this is not a new story. Tam David West talked about corruption in the oil sector and they jailed him for taking a wristwatch as a bribe. <laughs> you know, uh, we've seen Farouk, it's the oil sector the, and, and, and the oil cartel is extremely powerful um, and it's integral to the character of the Nigerian state. So anyone who um, basically shines a torchlight on it. Mm, so um, you, don't, you don't feel that this might not uh, be unconnected? To the fact that you actually brought up the fact that no, I don't, don't think it. I, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't think it is. I mean, look. Oh, if you if you just look at the logic uh, of these things, uh, the, the Financial Reporting Council is not EFCC. It's not ICPC. It's not an anti-corruption agency. It regulates auditors. Okay. Um, I the they wrote they made observations on our accounts in May. Uh, these observations uh, were given to auditors, and the auditors answered. They gave the uh, someone um, gave the president. Um, cut and paste of the same letter and the president wrote me to explain and, and I also basically replied. Um, I didn't get any feedback, this was May. Um, and I did ask the president in writing if there were any allegations against the central bank that I wasn't aware of. I, I actually asked him in writing, this was going back to June, are there any allegations, is there anything that uh, against central bank that you'd like us to explain? Uh, we would be happy to explain it. And I, th there was nothing. So. Um, the issues, when you look at them, uh, are strange to me. Uh, I'm supposed to have invested $5 million in International Islamic Liquidity Management Corporation without the approval of the president. Well, guess what? I have the written approval of the president. Yes, because you see, when the letter was actually read, part of the statement said that uh, you've been accused of alleged uh, reckless spending and uh, financial... So, so, let me, so, so let me ask you... What, you, what would be called reckless spending. And let me give you an example. Um, last year, the House of Reps commended the central bank. In the four years I have been governor, the central bank has contributed 75% of the total internally generated funds given to finance by MDAs. The year before I became governor, in 2008, the central bank gave 8 billion naira to the Federation account. Based on 2012 profits, we gave 80 billion. Based on 2013 surplus, our accounts were just approved last week. We are giving the government 159 billion naira. 
in the five years I've been governor, out of the surplus of the central bank, I have put in almost 600 billion naira, which is more than in the entire 50 years of the bank before I became governor. So where is this financial recklessness? Okay, if you look at um, our accounts, you will see that year after year, I have been bringing down the overhead expenses of the bank. The lines have been coming down. Um, that letter talked about currency. Oh, uh, I haven't seen the details, but some of this, it was read to me. Oh, you spent 38 billion naira, uh, or you said you spent 38 billion naira on currency, whereas Mint um, said um, the, their revenues or their cost was 20 something billion. Nobody even asked, is Mint your only supplier of currency? Because the Mint doesn't supply all the currency in Nigeria. It doesn't have the capacity. We buy from Obata, we buy from Delaru, we buy from GN, we buy from international printers. So that 38 billion would have contained what we paid to Mint or we paid to other printers. A simple question. Some of the so-called interventions that are talking about were taken with the approval of the president. Some of them were at the request of the president. And these things are all documented. So I don't think it's really about that. I think um, it goes back to a decision. A decision had been taken anyway that I would leave. And you know, frankly, um, I don't have any hard feelings. Like I said, I, I was sitting there when I was offered this job. I've always said very clearly, uh, I'm not looking for a job. Uh, I had uh, a good job. I, I, I mean, the kind of family I come from, I've never lacked anything. So I'm ready to work. So why in your conversation earlier today with CNBC did you say you were going to challenge this decision? I, I made it very clear that I'm challenging for the institution. And, not for you. Uh, not for me. No, not for me. And because even, and, and I know the courts will rule um, in, in, in our favor, but I will not go back. I've had my last day at work. I mean, for me, it's, I've, I've had my, my time. I've achieved everything I've set out to achieve. I'm not going to go back. There's nothing I'm going to do in three months that I haven't done in, uh, for in, in, in less than five years. I mean, so I'm not, I don't need, I don't need to prove anything. Um, I've kept inflation at under 10% uh, for 14 consecutive months now. Um, I've kept a stable exchange rate despite all the tumult around um, a tapering, uh, around uh, the Middle East. Um, we've seen what happened to emerging and frontier markets. The Naira has held steady. Uh, we've been able, to, because of that, to get a revival of the capital market up by 41%. Uh, we fixed the banks. Uh, no Nigerian, in the period I was governor, no Nigerian, no depositor, no creditor has lost a single cobble in a Nigerian bank. Um, we've done our cashless Nigeria, we've done our biometric project, we've transformed the payment system, we've put on the table 800 billion to a trillion naira worth of long-term single-digit finance to agriculture, to SMEs, to power, to aviation, to the real sector. So I, I look back at everything I've done um, in five years, everything I wanted to do, uh, I'm very happy. And, and I've told the president this before. In a meeting with him, I said to him, listen, I have delivered 100% on my targets. How many of your ministers can say they've done that? So, um, no, it's not for me. But the central bank is an independent institution. There is a section of the act that says the president cannot remove the governor without two thirds of the state. There was a reason for that section. You cannot um, go round that section by saying, I'm not removing you, I'm suspending you. You cannot do that uh, because it undermines the entire principle. And if the idea is, well, under the Interpretation Act, if you, or the idea is the president appoints so he can suspend, <laughs> the president doesn't appoint. He proposes and the Senate confirms. So the, the governor is actually appointed by both the president and the Senate, and therefore should be removed by both. And so for me, I think we should challenge it. I think it should be challenged so that governors coming after me will not refuse to act or will not refuse to be independent for fear that they will be suspended. Uh, me personally, uh, what happens to me, I don't know. Uh, the, what, what the state, the state has limitless powers. It's got the police, it's got the EFCC, it's got security services, it's got the judiciary, it's got the prisons. It, and, it, it, can, it, can do, it can do anything. Uh, it's got the armed forces. So, um, I'm not, uh, I mean, the state can do anything to me. That, yeah. That's fine. But we want to make sure that we, we establish the principle. Well, Mr. Sanusi, why is it that um, knowing that the president has recorded the name of the new CBN governor and his deputy to 
for confirmation, why, and then your tenure is ending in less than four months, why don't you just resign? Why would I resign? I mean, if, if, anybody, wanted, if anybody wants me out, I, he, you, I can't make it easy for them. They've got to go the hard way. But they've already started the process. Well, that's a hard way. No, well, that's a hard way. You've suspended, uh, broke the law. We'll go to court and we'll see. But at least we've had a situation where I have been suspended when there is no provision in the Central Bank Act for suspending the governor. You know, so I was not going to resign to make it easy for anybody. If anybody wants to break the law, he can break the law. He's the president. And so you're going to wait out for the remaining part of the tenure? No, 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 please. Uh, I've said that over and over again. I am not going back to this job. If the court today, if I go to court tomorrow and the court rules tomorrow, that this, in fact, if the president today said, I have withdrawn that suspension, I would give him my resignation. I'm not interested in the job, okay? But I'm interested in the institution of the central bank and the independence of that institution and the independence of the governor. So what's next for you? <laughs> what I was always going to do, um, if they, I mean, they have my passport now, so I don't know if they're going to let me go. Uh, so who has your passport? the SSS at the airport, uh, but my, uh, my plan was always to spend time uh, studying languages. I was going to study French and then go and study Mandarin uh, and come back to my farm. Um, and uh, Fish, poultry? No, no, no. I haven't even decided. I bought a farm um, and I plan to, I was thinking of doing horticulture. Uh, so uh, do tomatoes and vegetables. Uh, Funny, you're laughing, but I discovered that tomato costs more on the streets of Lagos, on the streets of London. Uh, so there is a lot of profit to be made out of that. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's a big burden off my, off my shoulders. I've, I've been working very hard uh, for so many years, and I've, I was looking forward uh, to, to this break. You know, if it comes early, it comes early. But there's still some business to finish, which is, first of all, to uh, ensure that we establish if this act was legal um, and also to um, uh, to see if there is any need to defend the integrity of the institution. I say institution because um, none of those uh, statements in the letter had anything to do with what I did personally. It was about the central bank, whether the central bank acted within the law, the central bank complied with this and the central bank did and we'll, we'll, and the central bank I'm sure uh, yeah, will defend it. Yeah, I was just it. going to take you up on that. So the letter you wrote to the president as regards um, the, the, the anomaly you discovered in the remitting of funds and everything, that it was leaked to, you leaked it to the former president, Bishop of Basanjo. How true was that? How could I leak it to Basanjo? I don't have any political connections with Basanjo. Obasanjo was head of state for eight years. He lived in the villa for eight years. He did not work in the central bank for a day. If he had sources, he was more likely to have sources in the villa than the CPN, don't you think? Doesn't it make sense? Mm. And, do you re and, and do you really think that a former head of state, military and civilian, can't get access to any document in this country? Especially if it was in different places, it was in central bank, it was in finance, it was in um, petroleum, it was in NMP, it was in the presidency, and God knows where. It wasn't um, a document that was so difficult to find. Uh... Okay, I've been meaning to ask you this question on your expectation of, for the next uh, incoming CBN governor. What would we expect? Right now is uh, Dr. Aladi who is sitting on that, in that chair. She's going to be the acting governor until everything blows over. What, what do you think, do you, do you think you'll carry on with you know, all the policy um, statements you've, you've made in your five years of I mean, looking, I mean, part of respecting the independence and autonomy of central bank governors, you don't try to give anyone directions. You allow them to take their decisions. Um, Dr. Alade is a very competent officer. She's been in the central bank for a very long time. She's been running economic policy, an active member of MPC and COG. Uh, I'm very happy uh, for her, and I, I do wish her. She was with me in Niger this morning uh, when the message came, and I called her, I was the one who called her and told her this is what I've been told uh, by my staff and I would like you to sit in in the meeting with the governors, um, I'm going back and explain to them that I have to leave. Um, I was not going to 
sit in Nigeria and say, I don't think this is legal and therefore uh, I'm, I'm going to stay. And the Nigerian ambassador to Nigeria came um, with a message from the presidency to tell me that, um, fortunately I had done that because I was going to face the humiliation of being called out of a meeting and told um, the president said, you are no longer governor, you know, you step out. So it didn't happen. I had already done that myself uh, the moment uh, I, heard, I heard about it. So she's very good. Um, and my colleagues in the bank are extremely good and extremely committed to this country. Uh, the uh, God Dwayne Mefiele, who has been uh, nominated uh, uh, a governor, is a very experienced banker. Uh, he's run a very good bank, uh, Zenith. Uh, Adil Labo, I know from First Bank, um, very strong accountant. And, and at this point, actually, uh, with the departure of Mr. Lemo, uh, one of my concerns was that the Committee of Governors was a bit light on accountants and finance people. So we've got two accountants and finance people going. You now have two economists and a lawyer. So the committee has the kind of balance um, restored um, that I think we lost with the departure of, of Lemo. So, um, no, I have no expectations other than to wish them the best. Uh, and, to, and, and you know, look, I've, I spent the last few months uh, praying uh, and I, I asked my staff in the central bank to pray uh, for the president that God give him wisdom in the selection of a successor. Um, I have to pray for that because if you have a legacy and you want that legacy to continue, you want to make sure that a wrong choice is, no, is not made. So I have had no particular person in mind. I have prayed uh, that God grant him wisdom, that God uh, ensure that the people that's coming to replace me and Mr. Lemo are people who are likely to continue uh, with the uh, policies we have around stability, around economic development in particular, financial inclusion, um, and will continue to run the bank and take it to, to greater heights. And I'll continue to pray for them uh, to succeed. Uh, but um, they will have to decide um, exactly how they want to run, uh, to run the bank and what policies they want to pursue. Thank you so much, Mr. Samuelson, for speaking with us. Uh, thank you.